Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I only have one more week after this in the fall. <laughs> Are you worn out? God's been working me over and over time. And he's been perfecting me and bringing me, oh yeah. It, it was easy in the prison, I was comfortable. And God's called me out of there to here. And I'm totally out of my comfort zone, so I know exactly where I'm supposed to be. So, while we were singing Amazing Love, I was just praising God, and I had my eyes closed, and I saw this picture. And it was Jesus, and he was standing there like this, and he was holding the world in his hands. And he was kind of smiling, he had a tear coming off of his eyes. I was like, wow, that is amazing. Well, I'm just going to give you this. I'm going to be preaching on grace today. So that's where we're going. And how, who, does anybody know what grace is? Give it to me, Lex. No? Grace is being short, but not that <laughs> Grace is the unwarranted, unmeasured, undeserving favor of God. Because we don't deserve it. Uh, my Bible tells me that we're sinners saved by grace. And how do you get saved by grace? It's real simple. To get saved by grace, you have to believe that Jesus was the Son of God and is the Son of God. That he paid the price that we could not pay, that we were not capable of paying on the cross and then rose on the third day to prove he was who he said he was. Now, while I'm doing preaching on grace, I want you to understand a little something. I have discovered in my time while I was in the prison ministry, there's two different kinds of people in there. Well, there's three people in there. There's the people who see how amazing grace is and they receive it. There's people who don't think they deserve it and they don't realize that Jesus paid that price and they can't accept that because they think they have to pay it themselves. And then there's the other ones who go, oh, I've got grace, so I'm cut loose to do whatever I want now. You know what? We want to be the guys who are amazed every day that God woke us up, Amen. that God poured his spirit out into us, and he's continuing to be with us each and every day. Now, I'm going to hope this all hammers out nice because it's been a week, so... I've had trouble getting quiet with the Lord and getting things squared away. Romans 3.24 says, Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight, but he did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. Grace frees you, guys. Grace turns you loose. Because you're no longer under the burden. How many of you have ever seen uh, a Red Pilgrim's Progress? Spectacular book. You need to read it. And if you don't do reading that well, you need to watch the movie. It is great. Because Christian is on his way to the Celestial City, and he sees all these different things on his way there, right? But when he gets to the cross, the burden falls away. Guys, we need to let the burden fall away and leave it lay there. Because too many times, like Tara was pointing out, we pick it up and we try to walk off of it again. We find the love of God because he puts his spirit into us. And that spirit is the Holy Spirit. And that grace is working in us and pouring out of us by his Holy Spirit. He is doing his best 
God is doing his best for each and every one of you. Now, how many of you don't always care for his best? <laughs> yes, my hand went up. <coughs> That's because... Are you ready and willing in season and out of season to walk with Jesus and do what he says? And I'm asking this question because I've had to ask myself this question a lot. Will you walk in what you're called to do? Will you trust him to provide for you? I seen a little chuckle that time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we have to walk by faith, not by sight. And I'm making all kinds of noise here, so. See, I got all kinds of notes here, and they're from all kinds of different translations, so. But if we believe God is going to provide for us, I got, a, I got a beautiful plaque that I got for Christmas from uh, one of my daughters. It says, where God guides, he provides. And that sucker's been really speaking to me every time I walk by it here of late. So, because, how uh, many of you know that I'm not 40 years old anymore? No, I actually don't know that. So, <laughs> um, my brain, my body knows it, but my brain doesn't. So, but there's times when I just find myself just running low on on juice and low, running low on strength, and I have to stop and go, Lord, I just need one more step. And when I say that, God always reminds me. I'm with you. Because when my son was bearing the cross, I told him one more step. And then he took one more step. And when he showed me that, I have to just stick my hands up because it becomes totally and completely part of me just how amazing grace truly, truly is. We sing the song Amazing Grace, but do we really, truly believe how amazing that grace is? Do we realize that that grace will provide? Do we realize that when we let that grace pour into our hearts, it gives us the power to overcome. Well, the last couple of weeks I talked about being in submission to authorities, right? That Holy Spirit will help you walk in that because there's power in walking in that authority. And the power in walking in that authority is, are you ready for this? To give up. Paul says, 2 Corinthians, this is chapter 12, and I'm just reading verse 9 because Paul's talking about this. He's talking about he had a thorn in the flesh, and he asked God three times to remove it. And God said to him, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. Are you ready to get weak? I know I am. I have not been able, I have not <coughs> been able to quit crying for the last eight months. It's constant. And... I can tell you right now, most people that knew me prior to that, um, yeah, there was no cry. Yeah. 
Manly men don't cry. Who? Yes, manly men cry all the time. In fact, Barb's granddaughter Raven uh, has only seen she had only seen me cry two times. It was once was when we were praying for Barb when she was in the hospital, and the other time was when Barb passed. And she said it shook her up. Well, guess what? I think people need to be shaken up. They need to have their cages rattled. They need to be shown that Jesus is real. And when Jesus touches your heart and you start weeping like a little kid, they look at you and go, what's wrong with that person? My Bible says be ready in season and out of season. Give a, a response for the hope that is in you. The Holy Spirit and God's grace give you hope. And how many of you know this? The Bible also says, and hope does not disappoint. Amen. Turn with me, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm sitting here trying to find it. Actually, no, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter... Chapter... Or, uh, yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Be all right. And I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Huh? Nope, sorry, that's Hebrews. <laughs> that's the other we're going to. <laughs> Corinthians chapter 6. Here we go. I lost my bookmark. Sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 and 2. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, it is an acceptable time I have heard you, and the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You know when the day of salvation is, guys? Day. Every moment of every day. And I just read to you not to take the grace of God in vain. Years ago when I was preaching at the prison, I was preaching out of 1 John. I don't know if you guys know much about 1 John, but 1 John is a real black and white book. You either are or you aren't. There, there's no room to color in between the lines there. And I was reading where it says, if you say you have no sin, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. And a guy out in the crowd, inmate, jumped up and started screaming, blasphemer. And I went, what? He screams, blasphemer. He's preaching blasphemy. And the officer back at the desk popped right up out of his chair because he didn't know what was going on. Well, I continued on with the service. And it went just fine. And afterwards, this guy came up to me and he goes, you know, you're, you're wrong. I said, what do you mean, I'm wrong? He says, well, I'm, I'm, I'm saved. I no longer have any sin. And I went, okay. Now, understand, we're talking inside of a prison. I'm the volunteer. He's incarcerated, okay? <laughs> and telling me how he has no sin anymore. And I said, okay, then just... Why are we having this discussion in this setting? Well, I just backslid a little bit. I said, okay, you backslid. He goes, I was pastoring a church. Actually, he said, I am a pastor of a church. And I went, okay. He said, Duh. well, you see, I just I had a little drinking, drinking problem. Okay, I had a little drinking problem. Alcohol got the best of you. I said, so what, did you drink and drive? Well, no, no, that's not why I'm here. 
He said, then why are we here? He said, well, I had a girlfriend. I said, and you were married? He goes, yeah. I said, okay, so you had a girlfriend and you were married and you were an alcoholic. He said, well, and I had to use some drugs too. And I went, okay. I said, so that's where you're at. Well, no, actually I'm here because um, I was taking money from the church so I could support my girlfriend and my drug habit. And I went, okay, now understand we're having this discussion with 30 other inmates around us. And he goes, why'd you see I just backslid? I said, so you call that backslidden? I said, you weren't convicted by any of this as you were doing this? Well, no, because I've got grace. That's called taking the grace of God in vain. And I said, well, I don't think that's backslidden. I said, I think you took a jump off the high dive in the deep end of the pool. He goes, well, you know what? You just don't understand. I'll pray for you. <laughs> and I stepped back and I went, that I'll take prayer. I said, I'll pray for you too. And he walked off and these 30 guys are standing around me, just looked at me and went, is he for real? Even these guys knew how out of pocket that was. You see, if we start thinking that we have no sin and we deserve it, we make Christ a liar. We make God a liar. Because it says in 1 John, the truth is not in us. The Holy Spirit abides in us and pours that grace out into our hearts. Not because God wants to beat us up. Because God wants to have that relationship. He wants to know. He wants you to know how much he loves you. He wants to draw you in to him. He says, James says, draw near to the Lord and he'll draw near to you. He wants you to come in. He wants that relationship. He wants that relationship with you more than you want it with him. He sent Jesus to prove that. <sighs> Turn with me, please, to Hebrews. Now we're going to go to Hebrews. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 4. verses 14 through 16 here. Seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was at all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us, be, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. How many of you know that God's going to help you in your time of need? How many of you know sometimes you think the way he should help you isn't the way he does? Amen. Yep. How many of you know that sometimes you're hanging by the last thread before the help shows up? Okay, just so you guys get a clear picture of this, that's called faith. That's called walking by faith, and that's not easy. But by grace and the Holy Spirit, you'll be empowered to walk upright in that. Jesus helps you walk upright in integrity. You have a high priest who has been tempted in every way that you have. How many of you really understand? Jesus was in the flesh, right? Jesus got hungry, right? Jesus felt pain, right? Jesus got thirsty, right? He was tempted in all ways. He was given the opportunity to lie. 
when he was questioned by his disciples, when he was questioned by the Pharisees, anybody who came up to him and tried to trick him in something, he could have lied. He could have cursed them out. Yes, Jeff. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, you're talking uh, Hebrews 2, verse 14? No. Hebrews 4, verses 14, 15, and 16. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry. Did I, did I say two? I might have. Um, that's good to say. I get misquoted whenever I talk to myself sometimes. So. Where was I? Yes, Jesus, temptation. Jesus was tempted in everything, just as we are. Here's the difference. Jesus said this. I don't do my will, but the will of the Father in heaven. <clears throat> now you do the Father's will because you have the communication. You have accepted that grace. And how many of you know, okay, Isaiah says by his stripes are healed, right? How many of you know that grace can heal you? Grace can bring healing because it's in you and it works in you and it pours out of you. Uh, turn with me please to Galatians chapter 2. digging around. Got a lot of scripture notes here that I'm trying to dig through. Didn't get to chop them down like I usually like to. Um, I gotta go back to my notes because I forgot where I'm going. Galatians chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 19 through 21 here. For, the law, for through the law for through the law died no to the for I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes from the law, then Christ died in vain. Paul, I love Paul. He had such a understanding of how big God is. He had such an understanding of how gracious God is. He had such an understanding of how merciful God is. And you know what? He understood this. Jesus told his disciples, Everything you see me do, and greater things shall you do. Okay. Do you know why we're able to do greater things? Because Jesus had no sin. We have to overcome that sin nature by the Holy Spirit, by God's grace, by his love, and by his mercy. And every day, we walk upright in that. Every moment of every day, we're given an opportunity to say, I don't want this anymore. But you know, God's love draws us in. God's grace keeps us on track. And God's mercy shows us who we are. He loves you unconditionally. He paid the price for you unconditionally. His grace is unfathomable and inexhaustible. You guys know that, right? God's grace can't be exhausted. It will keep pouring out in you, on you, and through you. Turn with me, please, to Ephesians chapter 2. I 
actually we're going to Ephesians chapter 1, so it doesn't matter. We're going to the same place. Ephesians chapter 1, I'm going to start at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Stop right there for just a second. How many of you know how blessed you are? How many of you know that when you're having a hard time getting to God, there's two ways to get there? And I'm going to give you the formula, because this is a formula. Are you ready for this? First of all, I don't care what's going on around you, start thanking him. He showed me this several months ago. Just get thankful. No matter what's going on, speak it out. And you'll feel him coming into the room. Second, start going, you know what, Lord, you blessed me here. You blessed me here. Start counting your blessings. That Frank Sinatra sang that song. Count your many blessings. You start counting your blessings. You know what the amazing thing about this? I was talking with Pastor Randy here just the other day. Reckless love, right? I'm reading Reckless Love, and I'm thinking I'm going to learn some new stuff here. And as I'm going through, I'm like, well, God, God showed me this already. I'm doing this. God showed me this already. I'm doing this. It was a great big book of confirmation for so much stuff I was doing in me. When you get thankful and you count your blessings, you step fully into, are you ready for this? God's presence, his grace, and his mercy. And it pours out to you. You know that grace just draws you in when you start feeling it. It just, it just pulls you. you. You can't help but just be pulled in going, how can I not be this thing? Let's read on down. Sorry, I kind of rabbit trail there for just a short second. <coughs> I'm going to read that over. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Check my notes real quick here. How many, how many of you know what I just read? I know. Somebody tell me. I sing it all the time. I know you do. I am blessed. Chosen, accepted, adopted, forgiven, and redeemed. Did you know that was grace? So God told me when I was putting this together, that's grace. That's God's unfathomable grace. That's God's unfathomable mercy. That's what Go to verse 2. Huh? Go to verse 2. Grace to you and <clears throat> peace from God our Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace. God's grace is available all the time. Now how many of you know that grace also works out of you? Grace also empowers you to love the unlovable. Grace, mercy, and love will pour out of you. When you have fully received God's grace, and don't belittle that grace, but when you have fully received that, and you can receive that, and forgiveness. I feel sorry for the people who sit and Try to work their way up to get right with God. How many of you know you cannot work hard enough to get right with God? Amen? <laughs> I had a uh, young man in a Bible study in Taylorville some years ago that uh, 
the lady that was with me, Lila, was talking to him, and he was a veteran, and he kept looking at her going, you don't, you don't understand. You don't understand what I've seen. You don't understand what I've done. And I was just leaning there, and God told me, go up there. So I got up, and I walked up, and I just put my hand on Lila's shoulder, and I said, can I speak to him for a minute? She goes, yeah. And he was sitting in a chair, and I knelt down on one knee, and I looked at him. I said, so you can't receive that forgiveness? He goes, no. And I looked him dead in the eye, and I said, who are you to deny Jesus Christ who paid that price for you? And he just sat there with a shocked look on his face, and he looked down at the ground. Because for the first time, he realized just how much Jesus paid for him. Now, I don't know if he ever received that grace or not, but I know that door was open to him that day. And he started crying. I want to believe he did receive that grace. I want to believe that he accepted the free gift of salvation that Jesus offered for the first time in his life. I want to believe that he laid down the heartache. Because I really believe he did. I didn't see him too much after that. Um, he was within a few weeks of going home. So. Okay. Ephesians chapter 2. And I'm going to read verses 4 through 10 here. And we're going to hammer this thing home. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he has loved us, even when we were dead in trespass, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. And not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Grace empowers you to do what God wants you to do. Grace heals you when you're hurt. Grace strengthens you when you're weak. Grace reinforces your faith when it's waning. Grace shows you how much God loves you. Amen? Now, I read that last part. He's got work for you to do. I've already told you he's going to provide for you. I've already told you he's going to empower you. I've already told you he's going to help you every step of the way. Now, here's my thing. Do you believe it? Or do you need a little more faith? Don't answer that question, please. I want you to, guys to take this word. Take God's grace. Suck it in. Get it into your heart. Get it into your mind. Get it into your body. Make it the daily bread you eat. Make it the very air you breathe. And understand that the, he's gonna, he will freely pour into you says in James, anybody who lacks wisdom by the mask of God who gives liberally when without reproach, but says not to doubt that he's going to give it to you. How many of you know that's where we fall short? Well, maybe it's just me that falls short there. I kind of start doubting once in a while. But I want you guys to understand this, how much God loves you and how great his grace is. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you. We thank you for everything you've done, everything you, you continue to do, Father.
We thank you for your grace and for your love. We thank you for your son. And Father, we just ask for provision to provide. I know uh, where we're at, so many of us are kind of struggling. And Lord, I just ask that you would provide by your mighty hand, by a miracle, by just some gracious thing that would just pour down from your, your heavens, Father. And Lord, I just ask that uh, you just continue to be with us and abide us with us, continue to guide us, take us down the path each of us needs to go. And Lord, I would just ask that you would just continue the work you've started here in this body, in this church, and in this town, so that you receive the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.